Let's look at the tools and parts used in this video to install our voltage reducer. These tools includes the one you might need to access the dash and the wire channel underneath the floor mat to hook up the key switch. 16 gauge wire, three colors of at least five feet each, trim removal tool, wire cutter and stripper, crimper, quick splice, butt connectors, five sixteenths inch ring terminals for 16 gauge wire, multimeter, pencil, T45 and T30 bits, Phillips head drill bits, a few other drill bits, a drill, nuts, bolts, and screws for mounting, washers if you want to ventilate it, 13 and 14 millimeter sockets and wrench, torque wrench to tighten the batteries to spec, zip ties for managing wires. Let's take a second to talk about this voltage reducer and how it works. So this is the harness that attaches when you're all done hooking up the wires right here to the reducer. You got your inputs and your outputs. So these two are the inputs. These would be connected to the battery. This thin one is gonna go to the key switch. So this is gonna turn it on and off as the key switch gets turned. And then finally, these two thicker ones are what they call the load. And these are gonna connect to our fuse box. Before we start, I have a little jingle for you to help you remember the safety precautions. Doom, 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 doom. Before you walk on your car, do these safety things before you start. Turn on the car, parking brake down, flip your switch to dome mode, and disconnect your battery. Hey, this is Paul from Streetwise Carts, and before we jump in, I just want to let you know that this video is part of our free street legalization mini course available at streetwisecarts.com. Signing up for this course also gives you our downloadable parts buying worksheet. This free mini course is the installation portion of our full street legalization course that goes over all the state paperwork and compliance issues that you need to be aware of when converting your golf cart to a street legal LSV. You can find a link to the free mini course along with a 10% off coupon for a full street legalization course right down below this video. All right, let's jump back in. First thing we'll want to do is mount the voltage reducer. I'd recommend trying to find a place where you have some space to work with. On my cart, I have space under the driver's seat, so I'm going to mount it there. To give myself easier access to the reducer, I'm going to mount this to a scrap piece of MDF that I had lying around. I'm going to drill holes in it and then put bolts going upwards into it so I can easy, easily remove the whole thing. Most people want their voltage reducer and fuse box to be close together, so keep that in mind. Mine is going to go right next to the reducer on this panel. These units are supposed to be mounted on metal because there's some heat and concern about plastic, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some washers underneath the mounting holes just to give some ventilation. My voltage reducer has a wiring harness. So I'm going to connect the wires to the harness first and then hook it up to the reducer last. Next, we'll connect five 16 inch ring terminals to our 16 gauge wire for connecting to the battery, matching the colors of our harness. Check your diagram. On mine, the wires from the battery terminal to reducer are black and red. Now we'll connect the negative to our last battery in the chain and the positive to the first battery. The negative terminal that I need to access is in a very tight location. So be extremely careful not to touch your wrench to any other of the battery terminals. I did this once and it was very, very scary. You can see the damage that I did to my torque wrench. What I do now is I grab a flat piece of cardboard or wood to block off the other terminal just in case. Run these wires to your voltage reducer. We'll trim and connect them after we take care of the key switch wire. If your reducer has a key switch wire, we're going to show you how to hook that up. But if you have an RXV like I do, it's important not to attach to the key switch. I'll put a link down below to show you where to connect this wire on the solenoid. In order to get behind the dash, we'll have to remove the side skirts and to run the wire, we'll need to remove the floor mat. Some carts have the key switch in an easy to access panel. So removing the entire dash is not necessary. My cart had three T45 screws on each side of the side skirts. Next, you'll need to pop several push fasteners, which come out easily with a tool like this. From there, you should be able to wiggle the floor mat right off. 
In order to access the channel, we'll need to take off one more set of fasteners. The dash was attached with four T30 fasteners, so go ahead and remove those. You should be able to wiggle the dash free at this point. Once your dash is down, there's one more panel to remove to get access to the wires coming from the dash and down to the floor channel. Once you pull that down, you'll find your key switch. My key switch has four wires, but typically you have two or maybe three. Use a multimeter and connect the negative to your battery negative and the positive to one of these connectors. One should be hot at all times and the other will have no power until the key is turned. You want to find the terminal that reads zero while the key is in the off position. Now you'll need to use your quick splice to tap into this wire. Here's a quick overview on how to use this splice. Place the wire that you want to tap into into this outside opening. Then place your wire you want to insert into the opening side that has more than halfway through the splice. The other end will be blocked. Take a pair of pliers and push down the metal piece until it's all the way down flush, and then close the top flap. If you don't have a quick splice, pull the female spade out, cut it off, and combine the two wires and crimp a new female spade on the end, and plug that back in. Once you've tapped into the wire, run it through the channel below the floor mat into your voltage reducer. Trim the wires. Then crimp a buck connector to the wires, then crimp onto the wire harness. The harness should be disconnected at this point. You'll also want to crimp the outgoing wires as they'll be live once you turn the cart on. At this point, you can connect your harness to the voltage reducer. It's common that there's a spark at the harness connection. Don't be like me, I get startled easily. Once you're all wired up, turn your key switch on and then test on the output with your multimeter. If you're not getting a 12 volt reading, make sure your crimp connections are secure and that you're getting power from your key switch. Our next step is to hook up our fuse box, which we'll be getting into in the next video.